Ten Ken, and an industry veteran in enterprise mobility. And he'll be talking about current trends in enterprise mobility and security versus usability. So a round of applause for Alan Giles. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Priscilla. Um, as Priscilla said, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit this morning about some of the trends in enterprise mobility, particularly with a, a bent towards a very hot topic at the moment, which is bring your own device, uh, BYOD, and um, how we can really uh, get the best use out of BYOD, both from the enterprise perspective and also from the end user perspective. So there's a bit of a dilemma in enterprise mobility today. Um, if you look at the top, the enterprise is now truly mobile. 90% um, of companies have deployed mobile devices to their workforce. And it's a huge number. And that can be any mobile device from a, a just a regular feature phone or a smartphone or a tablet that they're trying to drive productivity with. On the flip side of that, their employees are acting like consumers. And over three quarters of employees are now taking their own devices their personal devices into the enterprise and using them for corporate functions. If we look at the enterprise landscape, at the moment, a half of it is taken up by Android as an OS, with iOS, iPhone, and iPad taken up about 30%. So these two players are really dominating the landscape at the moment. Microsoft are expected to take up to around a quarter of this with their new devices and the new OS coming out. Uh, whilst BlackBerry, unfortunately, continues to fade, um, even in large enterprise. There's a lot of evidence that um, BlackBerry 10 didn't really fix the problems, and a lot of large enterprises are looking at other OSs to fulfill their corporate needs. The iPad, in particular, as a device, has forced IT managers and directors into the reality of BYOD. It's established a desire for the tablet form factor, more and more field workers are using tablets rather than laptops. Weight, battery time, uh, uh, usability, they're all contributory factors to why people want to use tablets out on the road. 82% of smartphone users are accessing email on their devices, whether it be their own email or their corporate email. And just over a third of workers in the UK access their work email on their device in their spare time. Now, this shouldn't be ignored because it means that enterprises are getting real productivity gains, whether they know it or not, because we as people are using our phones and checking our work email outside of the working day. The working day gets longer and longer and it gets more flexible. And that, that's a big benefit. And you can actually put monetary benefits to the enterprise around people being able to access corporate email and corporate assets on a mobile device. So at the same time that we have this mobility dilemma and it's an ever-changing world, employee attitudes are shifting. Um, BYOD is the, the big hype topic of the moment, bring your own device. And lots and lots of companies and lots of industry sectors are claiming that they are the killer solution for BYOD. Actually, a lot of them are forgetting that BYOD, the trend is in the hand of the user. And Typically, these devices are purchased as gadgets. They're not purchased as work devices. BYOD, the whole phenomena, it spikes around Christmas time. So people get new phones and, and new tablets. I, I take some of that back. It's not only Christmas time. It's also around October time, just after Apple have just released a new product. So you see lots more devices coming into enterprise around about October and around about January. And people are rocking up to IT and saying, I've got this new device. I want it connected. I want to have, predominantly, they say, uh, they say email. But once they see the power of the device, they want more things. The whole BYOD phenomena was started from the top down. So it really was executive jewelry being brought into IT, people with the first generation of iPads and iPhones, and the CIO or the CFO saying, I need my email on this. IT managers hated it, and I think secretly still hate it, because these are devices that they don't really control fully. User experience is really important in BYOD. People are bringing their devices into work because they are, um, they're au fait with the experience they have. They've bought the device because they like the OS, because they like the user experience. So whatever platform you present in front of them for an enterprise use has to take advantage of the native experience because that's why these users are bringing the devices in. That's why they bought them in the first place. But the users are expecting to have some level of control. How much they're willing to put up with is debatable. 
With corporate-owned devices, slightly different. Uh, viewed as du dual purpose for business and pleasure, there's a lot more control over them. The one thing that IT departments struggle with is they issue out devices, and really, at the end of the day, they don't know who's using them for the most of the time. They hope it's the employee, but quite often, I think you know we, we've all done it. We've all taken work phones and, and work devices home, and our kids are sitting there playing Angry Birds on them. And actually, the IT department have very little control over that. So th there's another balancing act between those devices brought in by the employer, uh, by the employee, and those devices that are provided by the employer. The BYOD community, those users resent giving control over their gadgets. So they've got a nice, shiny new phone or tablet. They take it into IT and they say, I want my email. I want to be able to get onto SharePoint. I want Salesforce. I want whatever it might be. Normally, the first thing that happens is the IT department say, that's great. I'm going to put an MDM solution on there, and I'm going to control your device, which sounds reasonable. However, straight away, you've given over a 500-pound device to the IT department who now control how you use it. It's a bit, bit of a challenge for most BYOD users. Employee, employees also believe that IT doesn't really want to control these devices, so they make it unreasonably difficult. Um, I don't subscribe to that, but uh, you do hear people saying it. So the employees' attitudes are shifting. The market attitudes are also shifting. I have a slide later that will kind of show the journey. Corporate IT will continue to shift their attention from enabling users uh, on mobile to enabling users on mobile devices rather than just enforcing a basic set of security standards. So previously we had this, um, you take your device in, it's locked down. You can't do much with it apart from what the IT department want you to do. Now the trend is that IT departments are enabling users to be more productive using a raft of mobility solutions rather than locking it down, opening up the device so that it's more than just a toy to play Angry Birds, to play Scrabble, to do Facebook, but you can also, alongside those things, do all of the things that make you more productive. Mobile vendors have got in on the act. Um, they're continuing continue to add more security capability within the OS and build over-the-top solutions on top of the OS. So um, iOS 7, everybody knows, is, 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 is going to be with us very, very shortly. The device management community are really encouraged by the increasing amount of hooks that have been added into uh, the iOS platform to make these devices more controllable, uh, easier to secure within the environment that, they, that they're going to be used in. Samsung with the Knox program and the SAFE program, there, there's a recognition there that these great consumer devices are actually the platforms that are going to be used within the enterprise uh, more readily than traditional QWERTY type keyboard uh, devices. So the mobile vendors have seen the trend, they're moving with it, and the capabilities of the, the new smartphones and tablets are much more enterprise friendly than they have, a been, uh, have ever been. If you look within the enterprise, <coughs> the business departments are continuing to demand focus is on their needs rather than the needs of the IT department. Uh, I think it's, it's unreasonable now for IT to tell everybody within the organization, you can do a small, a small number of things. You can have your email, maybe you can get hold of the corporate directory, you might be able to get the phone book, you might be able to get a VoIP client. Business users, line of business managers are looking at productivity benefits and how they can enable users to do much, much more than just a very narrow um, range of, of uh, activities. I've spoken about um, BYOD, it is here to stay. It's true to say that BYOD has been far more su successful in the US than it has here, but the phenomenon is increasing. Um, I speak to a lot of companies and I haven't spoken to a company in the last six months that isn't planning or implementing a BYOD strategy. So I, I do believe that the phenomenon is happening much slower than uh, in the US, and I think that is because Europe is a much more fragmented marketplace with many more carriers, lots of legacy billing systems. It's very hard in an area the size of the US, Europe, to pull off the same kind of scenario that they have in the US. But large companies, and particularly in the mid-market, are embracing BYOD as a way to save money and move their spend from CapEx to OpEx. So it, it is happening. It's not going to go away. Um, but it provides a challenge both to the users and to the IT department. And I'll go through some of those in a moment. 
Users are already very information packed on their personal devices, um, but we have to recognize they do need to integrate with the corporate. So th there has to be some, some middle ground to get to. And it, it is time for the IT departments to start thinking about BYOD can really mean in terms of benefits, not only to the employer, but also to the employee. Uh, the productivity gains that I keep mentioning are uh, when you start looking at ROI studies and what extra work you get out of your employees by embracing BYOD, the numbers are quite frightening. So there's no reason for people not to do it. And the last point is quite important. BYOD is much, much more than just corporate email. If we were still in the world of corporate email and everybody doing everything by email, then um, I think there's uh, legacy platforms that can cope with that. Uh, the ways that we communicate within the, within the workplace now are much more than email. Uh, we, ha we have IM, we have video chatting, we have uh, presence-based uh, solutions. And BYOD, uh, these smartphones and tablets can embrace all of those trends. So BYOD has to satisfy everyone. So <clears throat> on the left-hand side of the screen, this is where we were. Um, only as recently ago as a couple of years, the market was focused on baseline security requirements, so locking the device down, preventing people using things. And that's you know, very security conscious, old school IT way of looking at it. And the end users were really only focused on getting to their files, being able to pull files down. Where we are now is that companies are focused on employee productivity and return on investment. Uh, implementing a BYOD strategy isn't all about saving money and actually can be quite costly. So when you're starting to decide which solution to take, which devices to, to allow into your environment, how you manage them, how you provide content, <clears throat> just the whole raft of things that you can do in a mobile world, they're going to cost something. There aren't many vendors that are going to turn up and say, I'm going to give you all this for free. So ROI has to be a really important consideration. And looking at it from the user's perspective, end users are focused on interacting with content not just email, it's a raft of content. Whatever it might be that you can pull down to the device or have pushed to you, users are looking to interact with it. Maybe edit on the move, maybe uh, collaborate on the move, you know, so annotating things, not just looking at things. So it's, it's a big shift over the last couple of years from getting access to files to consume data to now actually interacting with content. And that's, it's, it's a big change within the mobility market. <clears throat> so what do the analysts have to say? Um, Gartner is everybody's friendly analyst. Uh, they published a report recently, the effects of mobility on information management. And the key strap line that they wanted to leave everybody with was the future of mobile computing will be context aware computing with mobile applications adjusting to the user's location, identity, and past behaviors. Contextual mobile applications will lead to new user experiences that will be simple, visually attractive, compelling, and interactive. And there's a few things on there that, that I'd like to really go into before showing you a, a solution later on. So we know that contextual mobile is important. How people consume data and content is relevant depending on where they are, what they're doing, what type of device they have, and their job function. So we have to take note of context-based uh, content usage, context-based. <clears throat> so there are, there are five key um, success factors that are brought out by the Gartner report um, to rolling out a mobile productivity solution. And th those are here, they're engagement, relevance, context, security and control, and organizational learning. And I have a slide on each of them just to talk a little bit about the points uh, that Gartner recognize are important. If you get all of these, if you plan for all of these and get it right, then you, you, there's no doubting that you will get an increase in your business productivity, something that you can actually put a fiscal uh, a number to that you can point to and say, that was a successful project or that wasn't. So the first thing to take note of is engagement. As users, we need mobile tools that are designed for mobile to get them to quickly adopt and use the solution. Um, there are a number of solutions that we can go and point at that were developed for a desktop environment. And as the market has changed, they, the uh, vendors of these solutions have made them, mo they've been able to use them on mobile as well. The 
the market has changed somewhat that there are a lot of young companies, a lot of very dynamic companies in the market that have developed their solutions as a mobile first solution. And then they've gone the other way around to make sure that mobile solutions can work on desktop. And that's an increase, increasing and interesting trend. These tools are going to be used all day and every day. They have to understand the way that mobile users work. A guy that's running around and he's, he's out of the office four days a week, he's traveling, uh, he's consuming and, and creating his data on the move, works in a very different way to somebody who sits behind a desk, has three breaks a day, goes out, smokes his cigarettes, has his coffee. They do things in a much more dynamic and agile way. So they need tools that match that behavior. Okay? The tools have to be simple to use, and they need to require little or no training to be useful. Um, we're all very time poor. We all want to learn to do things very, very quickly. Having a user manual of 50 pages to learn how to um, be able to create a spreadsheet on the move isn't going to cut it in, in, in this environment now. And the tools need to provide a single place for people to get what they need to do their job. Relevance is very important. <clears throat> we're swamped by content. Um, if it isn't a, a new widget that we're being sent details about, we're getting sent uh, requests to join different user groups. LinkedIn's asking us if we can give comment on different things. We're getting different content every minute of the day. Um, I'm sure I'm no different to people in the audience around um, how much email you get that you didn't expect, um, that, li that takes you other ways. It's so distracting. Um, I used to think I was busy when I got 100 emails a day. Um, I think I'm probably more productive now and a little less busy now I'm getting 500 emails a day because I found a way to get rid of a lot of the rubbish. But the, the point is, we used to think 100 was crazy. Now 500 is kind of acceptable. And we just consume more and more data or have data thrown at us more and more. Mobile makes that worse because invariably it's a smaller screen. You've got limited ta time to act. Um, the networks, if you're, if you're mobile, sometimes you'll have good coverage, sometimes you won't. It's still a conundrum to me how I can travel in from, I live within the M25 and I can travel into London and I have three or four areas on the train where I have zero coverage from any network. That to me is, is crazy, but it's, it's still the world we live in. Um, so we need to have solutions that are network aware. Systems need to proactively help the user to know what content is relevant to them and how to interact with us. Um, so some level of social integration or content scoring is, is nice based on past behaviors, going back to what Gartner said. And we need intelligent content that speaks to the user. So if I'm looking through lots of different things, I want something that cries out at me from the page. This content rating is really, really important because the content rating, when it's presented to me, can be different to how it's presented to somebody else because it's more relevant to me. I spoke briefly about contextual content. Um, any productivity solution must allow for presenting the right content in the right way for the mobile environment. Um, we need the content delivery that's network aware, device aware, location aware, and connection aware. And that's that, that content, whatever it might be, needs to be actually usable given the context of the device, where it is, what it is, what network it's on. You need to have choices around what data you want and what gets pushed to you, what you, get, what you pull from the network. Very important, and I'm glad that Gartner mentioned this because quite often in the, the, the mobile content area, people forget about security. It's very important that uh, the right level of security and control is there over the device and the content. It's no point having a security solution on a mobile device that locks it down and prevents it being usable, prevents you getting data because that's what they're there for. However, it still needs to have security. You want your data to be encrypted. You want it encrypted over the air. You want to make sure that the IT department and the employee can take some comfort from the fact that this is a secure solution that you're playing with and that the data is secure. Any content control has to have the basics of the MDM stack, a remote wipe, it should be location-based, and it should be time-based. You may create a piece of content, whatever it might be, meeting, meeting minutes from a board meeting. Uh, you might only want them available to a certain amount of people for a certain amount of time. You should be able to time that content so that it expires. Okay? These are all things that are available today. The organizational learning, this is an interesting part. The, the ability for users to understand how their peers and, expert, uh, and experts within their company are interacting. It helps users get closer to each other within a group. If you're a new employee into a company, I'll pick a sales function example. 
If you're new into a company and you know that there's a guy in the corner that sells $5 million a year of this particular widget that you're trying to sell, and he's the guy to go to. He's the guy that has all the right sales tools, all the right information, he creates the best presentations. He's the guy, you want some time with him to learn how it's done. However, he doesn't want to give you that time because he's busy selling $5 million worth of widgets. So if you can get access to the kind of content that he relies on, that makes you almost enabled as much as he is. So the social interaction and the organizational learning between teams without having to physically sit and learn from somebody is very powerful. Again, it's another big productivity game. You encourage collaboration and interactions, and all of this needs to be done without asking the user to take more actions or learn more things. Back to the being very time poor and wanting to take on new information as quickly as possible to be doing rather than learning about how to do. So all of that being said um, about where the market is uh, and how uh, Gartner position the requirements of the market and where the market should go, I'm going to introduce you to a, uh, a solution from Big Tin Cam, which is the company I, I represent. And it's a mobile productivity suite of products all within one hub. It's called Big Tin Can Hub. And you have all the productivity tools within one app on the device. And all of the things that I've mentioned so far are included. If they weren't, I wouldn't have mentioned them. But, <laughs> but everything in there is included. And, and, and we address all of the needs that we've identified are required. So if we recognize there's a change in the way that people are doing business, on one side, there is a, um, there's a mobile use explosion. And I, I described people are using many different OSs, many different form factors. They're using tablets as well as smartphones. Um, on the other side of the bridge, there's this content explosion. Many more different uh, types of file types, all needing to be used, whether it be video, documents, HTML5 sites. Um, the, we're all trying to do lots and lots of things on lots of different types of devices. So the perfect solution should uh, provide and manage all of this content securely, creating a secure container within the device that gives you access and allows you to collaborate with all those different types of content. So Big Tin Can is a new way of delivering content and productivity for the mobile worker. It's secure, it's intelligent, and it's social. <clears throat> On the security side, it's content policy management. It's, it's based on roles. It, it, you give permissions to people based on their role. Um, we interact with AD and, and, and um, LDAP. So it enables us to take job profiles and build out those job profiles, creating a different um, level of access per con piece of content as well as job function. And it gives us a really nice way of scoring content and users. We have complete content control. We have remote content wipe. I touched on the content expiration. You can create a piece of content, whatever it might be, and say it's only available for today, or it's only available for the next week. And as soon as the time is elapsed, that content disappears from whoever's device it was, it was pushed to. Um, and it also gets removed from the overall hub, the back end. So you, you are in control of what happens to your data. And it's location protected. You can decide where people can see your content. So at a very high level, you may decide that you're producing a different set of price books for the office in Boston than you are for the office in Sydney. So the guys in Sydney, when they try and open up a piece of content, they can't see it because they're in the wrong location. They may be, they may be charging more in Sydney than they are in Boston. So it's, it's a nice way of uh, determining how, how people use content based on where they f are physically located. That's at a very high level. If you get very deep down into a, a, a very granular level of location awareness, I'll give you an example of within a hospital. With directional Wi-Fi now, you can actually determine which piece of content can be used in each part of the hospital. You may decide that in the canteen, the electronic patient records that a surgeon has access to, they're not available. But when they're on the wards, they can call those records up because they're dealing with patients. So you can do lots with location-based context and content. So it's re really interesting. And we have full content encryption. The container, everything in the container is encrypted. And we use uh, the secure push mechanisms uh, and the encryption that's with them to um, protect the integrity of the data uh, in transit. 
the intelligent piece of the, net, of the solution, we have something that is called Content IQ. And on the back end, we have an analytics engine that looks at every piece of content. And it applies intelligent content scoring. So each piece of content, whether it be a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or a video, whatever it might be, a picture, is given a rating based on how many times it's interacted with, uh, how many times it's shared, how many times it's opened, pushed around, uh, and you get a rating between 1 and 100. The higher the rating, the more relevant it is. That, so people are driven to pieces of content that have a higher score. And it's a nice way of, particularly for marketing departments, to find out the results of what they're doing. If you're sat in a marketing department and you're pushing out, I know you work for Voxel, and you're pushing out um, 100 pieces of collateral a week to all of your dealers uh, across the country. It's a nice real-time piece of feedback that comes back from the users of the content saying which is the best content for them. Because if you, at the end of the week, after you've sent out these 100 pieces of collateral, if one piece of content still has a rating of one or two or three, that probably wasn't being used by the dealers. But if you've got something in the 70s and 80s, you know that this is the content that really works for the users. So you can target your marketing department to work on creating content that is actually relevant for the audience, saving a lot of money. Why, why do we have marketing departments just pushing stuff out into the channel, whether it be an internal channel or an external channel, that's not relevant? It's a waste of money. So we can get back to intelligent content scoring and allowing people to use the content that they've already identified by their past behaviors that they actually need. So it's a really good way of getting different parts of the organization to work together, creating multiple productivity benefits throughout the organization. <coughs> it works online and it works offline. So you have um, caching on the device, still secure because it's within the container, and you have real-time sync whenever you have an IP connection to the device. There's lots of things that you can do with the documents. Uh, you can annotate them. You can create an edit within the hub. One of the things that, um, one of the user experiences is that there's a little, uh, uh, it's not, not so good on, on an iOS device, is viewing PowerPoints. Um, they, when you download them to the device, they never render properly. The fonts disappear. Animations don't work. Uh, we have a PowerPoint rend a renderer within our hub uh, based on a Citrix engine. Every piece of content we go in, makes it's then rendered in a format that will work on the device it's targeted to. So no more getting embarrassed when you put a, a presentation up on a screen because it's not quite in the format that you created it in. You're, d you're showing what you created. And it looks very nice. And if anybody wants to see that later, please seek me out because I, I can sh actions speak much louder than words in this example. Uh, you can see the videos working, you can see the rendering working, you can see the animations. It's, it's very nice. You can deliver and run HTML5 content on or offline. Uh, so you can be creating things on the move. You can create short websites and publish those to the hub as well. And we have this content services layer enabling you to create, create rich mobile front ends on the move within the hub. Uh, we have one customer that's started doing this recently, and it looks really good. I, I'm quite impressed with it. it it's uh, a nice solution. <clears throat> the social element. As a user, this is an enterprise solution. But as a user, you can bring in your personal content. I link my Dropbox to my hub. So it's an enterprise solution, but I've got my Dropbox. Now all of the content is now within my hub. And it just it's, it's within the container, but it's hidden from anybody within the enterprise. So you manage it within the hub as a user. IT don't have to see it. They have no access to it. Uh, you do need to be aware that it's within the hub. So if something happens and you need to wipe it, it will get wiped. But it's just another way of having an extra level of availability to your personal content, whether it be SkyDrive, Box, Dropbox, or Google Drive. We have re real-time content metrics. I mentioned that with the scoring. Uh, we have a secure web browser. Uh, within the hub. So on, a, on an iPad or on an Android tablet or an iOS phone, uh, you can launch secure, uh, secure browser. And as an enterprise IT admin, you can disable the onboard uh, browser, should you wish to go down this route, and have the all browsing go through the hub, creating your own enterprise whitelist and blacklist. So it's a nice way of restricting what people do from the hub um, and how, how they, if it's a corporately owned device, how they actually uh, interact with the internet. 
one of the features that we have, which is uh, unique to us, uh, you can be working on a piece of content, and there's a little camera in the, in, the, in the corner. You press on the camera, and a list of available users comes up. You click on there, and you can have real-time video chat, both looking at the same piece of content, both annotating and editing the, p the same piece of content at the same time, having video chat over that, uh, over that piece of content. Unique to Big Tin Can uh, and really compelling. I've mentioned content rating, uh, how to subscribe to other users. Um, so I, I've done that. One thing that I, I just want to mention, mobile content is more than just Microsoft Office. It's more than just files on a shared folder. It's all of the things that you see up here. It's Office files, um, specific use cases might have different formats, locally rendered content. We have a forms engine within uh, the hub. You can, have, you can run native apps from within the hub. You can get to websites. You can have RSS. You have your social feeds coming in, and lots, lots more. There's, there's lots of content. Trying to promote the idea it's much more than email. It's much more than just Microsoft Office type documents. It's all of the content you use daily. So what we, what we offer is an opportunity, and, and you know, be quite honest, you can do all of the things we do on a mobile device by going and getting all of these apps. And in the enterprise, you can get licenses for all of these things, and they're all great, and they all work, and there's not one on there that I, I wouldn't recommend. They're all terrific. Uh, however, you've got to manage all of these to get the same experience. Um, so it's a choice. You manage many, or you replace it all of those things with one tool, a suite of, mo of mobile productivity tools that is secure, it's intuitive, it's intelligent, it's network aware, it's engaging, and it's cost effective. <clears throat> Big Tin Can, Can Hub is it's award winning. Uh, we have the secure mobile web and application launcher. We have integration with content as well as calendaring. Um, and we, you can bring in your information delivery systems, RSS, Twitter. The people part of this is role-based. I've mentioned this. Uh, we have uh, content recommendations based on an analytics engine that sits on the back end. Uh, you end up with an intelligent content community. You end up with a, 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 a use, user group who are using their content in a way that, until you actually see it happening, it's hard to imagine the different ways that people use content and the, the smart ways that people use their content. The way they collaborate is really, really great. And I mentioned that we integrate with Active Directory and LDAP corporate directories. <clears throat> it's multi-platform. Uh, we can host the solution in the cloud, very relevant for smaller organizations and some large ones that have already gone down that route. Um, but for those that like to see a shiny box in the corner, particularly IT managers that like to have something to stroke and look after and, and get overtime from, we do an on-premise solution as well. Uh, we work with iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. We offer a web browser experience as well as a desktop experience. So however you want to manage and control your data, Big Tin Can can offer you a solution. <coughs> this slide kind of is the wheel of fortune, I guess. It's the hub in the middle, it's based on policies, it's network aware, and it has connectors to external solutions. So we integrate very well with um, MDM solutions, with other file storage systems like SharePoint and Box and Workspace and Dropbox. We can connect into those and work very well, enabling you to use those if you've already spent on those for file storage, but then getting the content um, management and the content interaction experience from Big Tin Can Hub. And then on the outside, it, it, the three pillars that we were talking about, it's social, it's intelligent, and it's secure. We as a company, we work very closely with Apple, with Google, and Microsoft. Uh, our partners are, are, are numerous uh, across the world, and we, we've got about 170 customers worldwide, large and small. So we have big deployments with people like Siemens and Cisco, and uh, on-premise solutions where they're using the, the, the um, productivity gains worldwide, and we have smaller, we have a bakery that's using five licenses, but they just want to push out to all of their five offices the latest deals, and so it, it's, it's relevant large and small. Um, I just want to leave you with, uh, I've got some time at the end for Q&A, I just want to leave you with a short video, uh, which you've listened to me and I thank you for it, you've listened to me rattle on for about 35 minutes. Actually, I, I should have probably put this up first because it'll tell you everything that you can get and you don't have to listen to a boring guy in a suit. So.
I know, I said it was a short video, but I didn't want you to leave, so I didn't tell you how long it was. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed uh, the, the session. Uh, the thing I just want to leave you with is that we offer you the opportunity to deliver the right content to the right people at the right time and location. Um, and hopefully you found it interesting to see how a vendor can take advantage of the, the changing trends of enterprise mobility uh, by coming up with a mobile first solution. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hands up if there is any question, please. Questions? There is not any question? I have one. Okay. Uh, this year in the in London, a few months ago, in the InfoSec Week 2013, uh, being your own device was one of the big names. So there are a lot of products that do similar things than your product does. What is the advantage of your product against the other companies? Um, as I mentioned before, we give you an opportunity to aggregate all of these solutions into one container. So, yes, there are lots of solutions, and I put up the logos of a, a lot of these competing solutions, um, but most of them are quite narrow. Uh, you end up having at least two or three apps to get your enterprise mobile users being productive. Uh, what we offer is a one-stop shop that can do everything for you, uh, offering you the same level of security and the same level of comfort across all of those different um, activities that you might want to take. If I give you an example, <clears throat> I won't mention them, but there was a, a very well-known note-taking solution earlier this, this year that ended up being hacked. Um, now, I, along with millions of other users, ended up losing access to my secure notes because the account was linked to an old corporate email address that I had. So when the password, um, the, the password email was sent out to reactivate the account, it went to an old email address that I couldn't get hold of. So I lost a lot of notes there. Um, we as a company saw that this was an opportunity and quickly built a secure notes engine within our product. So when you, create, when the, you press the create button, you now have the opportunity to create your notes. So you now have secure notes and voice notes and video notes all within the hub. And it's, we're a young, dynamic, agile company. And when we see a market opportunity, we quickly integrate something new into the hub so that it's, it's an ever-evolving product. And I think that's one of the advantages. We give you an opportunity to aggregate all of, this, all of the functionality and you buy into a solution that is uh, ever-changing. Any other question? I knew there'd be other questions. There's never the first one, but then there's more after you. <laughs> Um, I just looked at the app on my Android uh, device and I'm somewhat wondering, um, it, it seems to me that it's a uh, bring your own iDevice uh, <coughs> solution because uh, and the presentation also pretty much avoided Android devices. Uh, no, the, the client, if you go to Google Play, you'll find the client there. Yeah. It works on Android devices as well. Um, so we, we support um, iOS and Android. We don't support BlackBerry. Um, I don't think there's a requirement to. They do most of the things that we do anyway. So, um, but both platforms get the same amount of development time. We actually have more Android developers than we have iOS developers because we have to work in the fragmented area of Android, working with all of the different suppliers. So the experience is slightly different, but that's not because of our hub. It's because we want the experience to be as native as, it, as possible. So on Android, it looks like an Android solution. With iOS, it looks like an iOS solution. So yes, slightly different. Um, the capabilities within the two uh, the two hubs are almost identical. OK, thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks for the talk. Um, is it an Android and iOS solution, or is it a phone gap solution? Or is it a what, sorry? Phone gap? Do you know phone gap? No. OK, so it will be an Android and an iOS Yeah, solution. so it, it, we're a mobile, our solution is a mobile-first solution. So we developed for iOS and for Android, and then uh, we then developed for Mac and for PC, and we also have a web browser as well. So you can have a web experience. So wherever you are, uh, it doesn't have to be on a mobile device, but we are a mobile-first company. So the product look and feel and the experience will always be better on the mobile side than it will on the desktop side. It's just how we've developed the product. 
Any other question? Hey, Dre Johnson from um, Viridian Housing. Um, we have a burgeoning... Um, bring Sorry, I, I can't hear you. If you can um, take that after this gentleman. Um, yeah, I'm Dre from Viridian Housing. Um, we've got a burgeoning bring your own device um, culture within our community. Um, my main concern, uh, which you kind of addressed but didn't really, was around the um, personal versus the business elements of your container. So, okay. for instance, you know, from what you, can, what you said, you can actually... Um, look at personal stuff within your hub, but also have the ability to um, look at business stuff. Um, what levels of security have you around between dividing the two? Because okay. um, we have that issue, basically. Yeah, so with BYOD, it, the, the BYOD throws up a conundrum, okay, between the, the desire of the user to have their private experience, but also have a corporate experience with access to corporate assets. So it is a containerized solution. Big Tin Can Hub is a secure container. As a user, you can opt in to bring in your personal content. But what I did say was, when you bring your personal content in, if the whole container needs to be wiped, you would lose your data. So it's kind of turning it around from, if you're a BYOD user, losing everything if the device is managed. We're managing content, not the device. If you only have an MDM solution and the device gets wiped, you lose everything on the device, including your personal data. With a, with a secure container with all of your enterprise stuff in, you can isolate the container and just wipe the container. Now, if you want to use the container for personal stuff, you take the risk of losing your personal stuff as well. But you still have it on the device anyway. So it, it is a way of separating um, enterprise and personal stuff. But should you want to bring your personal stuff in, you can. But there, are, there is that caveat. Is it, um, so you can bring the stuff in, yeah? Yep. Is, there, is there a facility to stop it from coming, going out in terms of? Oh, yeah, okay. yes, so yes, yes there, there is. Okay. So <clears throat> as, as an administrator, you can stop, uh, you can prevent content being shared, should you want to. Um, it is a, it's an interesting use case, but you can do it. So as an administrator, you have a lot, lots of flexibility around what the user can do and what can happen to the content. So yes, you could prevent that. Okay. I think this gentleman had a question down here. I still can't hear you. <laughs> I usually think that I'm loud, but uh, I'm not. Sorry. Uh, I want to just uh, find out about the mobile first. Is it the IBM's product, mobile first? You said you are a mobile first company. Yes, meaning that we've developed our product for mobiles before desktop. So, oh, okay, okay, okay. yeah, we are a, we're a mobile first company. The, the right. whole uh, ethos of the company is around mobile productivity, not just productivity. All oh, right, okay, okay, thanks for the clarification. Uh, what's your approach uh, to the uh, distinguishing between uh, uh, use by the uh, employee and the, his child, or what the authentication? possibilities, options do uh, offer? So we can offer um, a, le a varying level of authentication. You can enforce passwords, uh, you can enforce um, complex passwords on the, on the hub, uh, you can also enforce a password onto the device. So um, you know, I use a simple pin on my device, but then I have a complex password on the hub. So my daughter has worked out how to get onto my device but she will never work out how to get onto the hub within, within the device. So there is a, a, an extra level of authentication required to get access to the corporate information. Any other question? Uh, yes, uh, uh, and, and as an administrator, you decide how complex it is. Okay. Is there any question, please? There's one more here. <clears throat> Hi, uh, I was wondering how your apps um, work do you uh, basically program the apps you discover or uh, see, like the Forms app yourself? Yes, and we've created it ourselves. Okay, and is there an opportunity for third-party companies to integrate within your hub? Or yes, there is. So we we already we already integrate and partner with uh, other apps providers. Um, and sometimes we white label for them, and sometimes they white label for us. So there is that opportunity. 
but there is nothing like an open marketplace for apps like on the Google Play Store or no, the, no, uh, we, do, we we don't have that yet. <coughs> okay. And the files that are stored in a container, which is encrypted, I think. Yep. Um, is there a, a, a possibility to access these files within other apps? Are no. No. Okay. No. It's all within the container. It really is a secure container. When we <coughs> when we say that we're providing a secure container, we're not offloading to other apps to try and open them and uh, and do things with them. Um, they're in a container. They are secure. Okay. Hands up if there is any other question. Thank you very much. Alan Giles, everyone. And up next, we'll have Mark Townsley. And he'll be talking about the internet, well, rebuilding the heart of the internet without missing a beat. Thank you. <laughs> 